What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 16 of Scotsophronio. Um, this is Chad, and this episode is brought to you by nobody. I have no sponsors. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I want to get. I want there to be the day. I want. I want a sponsor, but uh, so if you want me to mention you in this to the all of the listener that uh that listen um if if you the listener want to be mentioned to yourself let me know and i'll mention you to yourself thanks <laughs> uh episode 16 scotsophronio uh the sweet 16th episode man sweet 16 uh you remember that show that was bad what is it okay let me i want to look that up real quick i wish i had someone else looking it up for me but i don't have that going on sweet 16 it was on mtv it was awful it was the worst show back when mtv had like they were going from like music videos to like shitty reality shows and now it's just shitty reality shows. And I, I honestly don't know what's on MTV anymore. Like what? I don't know. Uh, Sweet, si no, let me see. Sweet 16 show. It's already like 16. The number 16 with like pink glitter. My Super Sweet 16 TV series. First episode, January 18th, 2005. So that was my junior year of high school. Uh, IMDB. <laughs> IMDB. I've never seen a rating this low. IMDB gave it a 1.9 out of 10. Oh my god. That frilly sugar and spice title notwithstanding, this reality series follows privileged 15-year-old 15 15-year-olds 15 Usually girls, but there's an occasional guy featured and their friends and their friends as they obsessively plan their sweet 16 parties, which almost invariably featured an orgy of conspicuous consumerism excess not seen since the heyday of Dynasty. More recent episodes expand beyond sweet 16s to include quinceañeras, Debutante balls, bro mitzvahs, and more. Bro mitzvahs? Kill yourself. If you're throwing a bro mitzvah, you know what gets said at bro mitzvahs? Dilly dilly. That's the kind of shit that's going on there. Dilly dilly. Oh my god. The, so, well, what was I expecting? Uh, I look in the trash, and I'm going to see trash. So that's what happened. What was I expecting? 2005. Oh, God. Master P's daughter. Okay, she's throwing an 18th birthday party. That's not a sweet 16 anymore. This is... Ugh. I don't know. I was expecting... I don't know what I was... Oh, I was, I was expecting. Looking that up. Anyways. Uh, so this week's a little different. Uh, because I, I know I want to record a podcast. I like... it's Today's the day that I was going to do that regardless. But also... I need to play... I need to play a video game, man. And I want to play Shovel Knight. So I'm playing Shovel Knight again. And, um, I just want to do that. So, that's what's going on. Um, I'll start a new game. Uh, and, uh, I'll, I think I'll name him Mamba. Because, uh, Kobe won an Oscar. How crazy is that, dude? Kobe Bryant has, like, all these basketball accolades and then his retirement 
his retirement video like send off thing that he makes. So he wrote this this thing called Dear Basketball, which is like I watched this thing and I was tearing and I was crying anyway, so you know. It's like so well written. The music is John Williams, who did like Indiana Jones and all the Star Wars. And then you got an uh, a Disney animator to like it's an animated short. It's like five and a half minutes. Dear Basketball. Written by Kobe Bryant. I I don't know why would I know the animator's name? Why would I? Why does anybody? I should, though, because I'm getting into that, or I'm interested. But it's so well animated, and, like, the style is, like, pencil. It's, like, black pencil, and there's, like, occasional, like, purple-yellow because of Lakers. But it's it's beautiful, and it, like, flows, and it's just goes along with the poem that he wrote. It's so great, dude. And, like... At, at the end of your basketball career, your retirement, like, your retirement video wins an Oscar? <laughs> that dude's incredible. Like, and it, it's so well written, too. And when people, like, go outside of what they're used to, and, like, I, okay, here's the thing. As I fumble over my thoughts, well, I'm going to be playing a video game here, so, like, Really, I'm just like turning off my brain and just whatever. But okay, here's here's the thing about Kobe. The whole the whole my whole life, I'm 29. Okay, when I was seven or eight, that's when Kobe started playing for the Lakers. Um, I did a book report on him in sixth grade. The book was called uh, Kobe. <laughs> uh, I did a book report on him and. Uh, I remember, like, there was a lot of the stuff in that book that, stu- that stuck with me. Uh, just, like, how he played basketball. He grew up in Italy, so he's, like, fluent in Italian. That's why he, like, talks like that. When, when he got his award, he, like, all of his daughter's names are, like, Italian names and stuff. So he grew up in Italy. Um, but he, because people didn't play basketball there that much... He played shadow ball. He would play basketball against his shadow. So you can imagine if you're Kobe Bryant and you're playing basketball against your shadow, yeah, you're probably going to be pretty good. <laughs> like, uh, and so he played shadow ball, but he, uh, like, it just, it was crazy just to, like, see Kobe get a an Oscar and like still be relevant and stuff he was he was a laker for like 20 plus years so the majority of my life he's a laker and that has like that just keeps that just blows my mind because i'm 29 and everything good or bad that's happened in my life it was always like okay cool like you know i i'm in junior high now and oh kobe's still a laker and uh i'm in high school now and kobe's a laker uh my dad lost his job and kobe's but you know kobe's a laker and we got to move up to sacramento but at least kobe's still a laker and then you know i go to move to arizona for a little bit try college out that doesn't work but kobe's still a laker um you know brother gets married kobe's still a laker other brother gets married kobe's a laker like it's just it's crazy how how that's been and i remember watching his retirement thing and just like dude this this is too much man like it was the, it's like seeing and Kobe was good that whole time and only getting better like that's the crazy thing when someone does something for so long and is so fucking good at it for so long he's an old man playing against young kids and still fucking schooling them like that you know that you're put on the earth to do that like I wish I had that like yep and granted, like 
he would he would say and I bet like I mean he would probably say like yeah it, it was like I did it but I I did all those things because I worked so hard at it and like that's definitely true but I think I still think regardless he was put on this earth to play basketball and it it's just it's crazy so that was crazy I don't know it, but it's cool to see him win an Oscar I, I'm like playing a video game and like doing stuff so I'm kind of bouncing around in my thoughts but wild and he got an Oscar and like on top of like the MVP awards he has and like basketball championships an Oscar to add to his shelf like so insane the dude is incredible but I remember it, it there was like a quote from him in a uh, in the um, in that book that I read in sixth grade about him um, it was something along the lines like he doesn't do anything in his life. Oh, come on. I thought I wasn't going to die. Uh, that he doesn't do anything in his life that. Uh, maybe that's not it. Okay. Don't. Or it was like, don't, don't do anything in, in your life. If you don't expect to be the best at it. And there's some there's some points in my life where I'll be doing stuff and it'll be so frustrating. But I'll be like, well, I'm not I don't plan on being like the best at this, so it kinda puts it in perspective, like I know I'm not gonna be the best like stand up comedian. But there's also that thing that I wrestle with that's like if I'm gonna do this and it it the most frustrating part about doing that stand-up class is like I I want to be the best at it so I'm taking it seriously and people are like people ask me about it like oh how's that class going I'm like uh it fucking sucks dude going up in front of strangers well like I know Dan but like I don't know the Susan lady and the teacher I'm like getting to know and it's only gonna be more strangers when it like comes the time to perform the thing I don't like going up in front of strangers and looking like an asshole, not knowing what I'm doing. That's why I'm taking it seriously. Yeah, it's a f like supposed to be a funny class. Like, it's a class about jokes, but it's like writing the jokes and it's coming up with stuff that like is well delivered and like it's set. I'm setting myself up for success on that night of the performance or whatever. So I'm taking it seriously. Why would you not take yourself seriously if you're going to go up in front of 70 people and do something? I don't I don't know. It this past like week and a half like people are asking like, "Yeah, how's the stand-up class going?" I'm like, "Uh, it fucking sucks, actually. It's like hard as shit. It's not fun. It's like there's fun parts, but it's also frustrating to see me like fail up there at something I'm trying to do well." Like it's just not, I just own that dude. I just, I don't know, there's something about it where, but it is like this, it's this pull where it's like, do I, do I just do it? And like, yeah, that was a fun time. Like, yeah, I just want to do it and experience it. And it was fun. It's a fun experience such as life. Or am I going about it? Like, yeah, I'm going to take this class and I'm going to like learn all that I can. And when the time comes to perform it, I'm going to nail it. People are going to laugh and I'm going to walk away saying like, yeah, I fucking own that class. Thanks. Bye. Like glad I took that class and people like enjoyed themselves. Like that's all I want. I don't want to like, it's a stand up comedy show. You go there to enjoy yourself. And if you watch someone go up there and stink to shit, in not a funny way, then you're not going to enjoy yourself. It's like, well, oh, man, that dude, like, yikes. Why don't you walk in a way, like, feeling in a better mood, and then you, like, I think Easter is going to be the next day, and, like, you have a good Easter Sunday because you got put in a good mood Saturday night. That's it, and I just want to deliver that. So that's why I'm taking it seriously. 
I don't know. That's that's just my two two cents. Um, where was I even going with that? I love this game, by the way. Oh, I already got the money from it. Okay. Um, I like this dear lady right here too. I'm sorry, but you're a bit too short to me. Dear lady. I love it. Um. Bring me, oh, meal ticket. So I get the meal ticket from the goat. If you're not watching the YouTube video and you're not seeing what's going on, I'm getting a meal ticket from a goat who occasionally eats pages out of his book. <laughs> Which is incredible. I'm gonna use a meal ticket, sell it to this muscle man, and I get a meal, and my life increases by one. Boom. Did he already eat a page? I wanna wait until he eats one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Uh, so, I was poking on the internet and stuff, and I saw that. We all poke on the internet, I guess. It's, what we all do. Um, I saw that there's going to be a live action Aladdin coming out. Which they're making all these live action Disney movies, which is like cool. Like, I, okay, I get it. You just want to, uh, like, I get it. Oh, shoot. I just died. <laughs> Camera's in the way. <laughs> uh, like, I get it. You want to, like, revamp your stuff. But, like, I saw that they're making an Aladdin, and the genie is going to be Will Smith. Like, that is... What are you doing? Like, Will Smith's cool, and, like, I follow his Instagram. It's like, he's a funny guy. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, one of my favorite shows. But not the Disney genie. I think that's a... I don't think they should remake. I don't think they should... God. How do I... You see that? I don't think... <laughs> I don't think... No, you didn't if you're just listening to this. If... I don't think you should remake the movie because Robin Williams isn't here anymore. Like, who else can do the genie that well? Nobody. And they animated it so well. I wonder if the same animator from Kobe's thing worked on Aladdin. Like, he's like that kind of animator. Um, I don't know. Cool little bit of trivia I'll have to find out. Uh, but uh, that got me like, I was like, okay, well, that's stupid. Because Aladdin was like one of my favorite movies growing up. I think it came out in like 92, the animated one. But... Robin Williams Genie is like the best movie character I've ever seen in my life. Um, but uh, it got me like looking into like Will Smith's like IMDb just for shits, and um, that met like I saw like Men in Black. It's like oh dude, I remember that movie. But I remember the things they had in that movie that were like those little memory eraser things like how incredible would that be to have one of those and I remember thinking this like at the time like like having one of those and I think like Burger King had like a toy version of it or something where it's like a little thing and you like press a button and the red light shines or whatever imagine having that nowadays and what would you use it for? You like... You can get into a lot of trouble or you can like... Enhance your life with it. <laughs> like... Because you can have like arguments with people and then like... Yeah, I said that yesterday. And like, no you didn't. And then... And then like delete their memory. And they're like, oh, this fucking guy. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, the 
you can just like get into arguments and then like use it on your wife or husband and then like what were we even arguing about i don't know anyways i, ha I got my way so it doesn't matter and yeah you just gave me a thousand dollars but that's cool <laughs> like you can get into a lot of trouble but i was thinking of it in terms of like video games like i don't want to you can get into like having sex for the first time again like feeling that how incredible that is or if it was bad you just like oh, i gotta forget about that <laughs> but i thought of it this is my mind i thought of it like playing a video game for the first time all over again and how i would never i can get like zelda breath of the wild just get the game play it all the way through forget about it play it all the way through forget about it and it's that would be my life would be in, i would love that or seeing it like a movie seeing aladdin for the first time like forget i saw the movie boom did it i think that'd be an incredible thing to have obviously very bad thing to have I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it. <sighs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I think Men in Black, dude. How good was Will Smith's song for that, though? And that was like the only rap I can listen to back in the. I just died in the same part again. That was the only rap I could listen to growing up because we we had to get like edited versions edited ed edited versions of like albums if if we got a rap album we would get uh the edited version <clears throat> and we would go to Walmart and that's where you get edited CDs Walmart sold edited CDs And if you didn't know that, and you got the CD, then you're screwed. Because you already opened up the CD. And it's like... D I remember getting... I think Eric got a DMX album? Or someone. Maybe it was the dude I was carpooling with, like, to junior high or whatever. But he got a DMX album. And... The... A lot of the edited versions of DMX songs have like the him barking. <laughs> it's just like a because he did that. It was just like a out oh, out. Oh. You know how DMX does that. And if you don't know, I I am not I'm not the idiot that sounded like that. He was the idiot that put that in his songs, in his album songs. Like yo DMX out oh, out oh, out, oh. and he just bark. Like what the fuck are you doing? Why are you barking in your music? But a lot of his songs would just like instead of the curse word, they would just have his barks. <laughs> or like a growl. Like er, like oh cool. It's so dumb. Wait, is anything over to the right here? Um No. Why? Why did they put just put a wall? That's confusing, because everywhere that doesn't have a wall, that's where the... Maybe that's what they're planning on doing. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, but, uh... So, a lot of the... A lot of the songs... That were rap songs that I liked back then, I would know, like, the edited versions. But Will Smith's albums were never edited, because... He prided himself in writing writing a verse without a curse. <laughs> uh, but Willennium was a great album. I remember in sixth grade bumping that stuff, dude. And Wild Wild West is on that album. And that's still one of my favorite songs to date. That's like, if you have a wedding, that's like, that's my time to shine. <laughs> if you have a wedding and that song comes on, that's like circle forms around me and I'm just like going at it over Will Smith's Wild Wild West because I know all the words to it it's kind of embarrassing but also also one of my greatest achievements in life 
unfortunately. Um, kind of says a lot about what I'm dealing with here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, I do want to see that Shape of Water, though, speaking of the Oscars. Like, Guillermo del Toro, he did, like, the Pan Labyrinth or whatever. Um, I want to see that, because it's like, I mean, it got Best Picture, you got Best Director for it. I'm really not... Like, the Oscars come around, and there's some movies that I, like, I don't even know if I've seen them. And I think... I, I've never even heard of The Shape of Water. Well, I mean, that sounds like I'm a crazy person. Shape of Water? What are you talking about? Water just takes shape of what... of whatever it's in. Isn't it, like, uh... What was it? Uh, what's his name? Bruce Lee? Like... Water is in the kettle. It becomes the kettle. Water flows. Like, the shape of water. I just think Bruce Lee. But until I see that movie, I guess. Water flows. Water in the kettle. It becomes the kettle. Forget what else he says. I'll try to put a clip in. To the thing. Oh, I gotta go back. <laughs> um... But, uh, God, I knew was gonna, God damn it. the timing of this stuff, uh, but yeah, the shape of water, I want to see it. If you, if you saw it, let me, like, let me know if you have, and like, if it was good or as good as like, cause I think the time period's like, it's kind of like the Bioshocky looking like stuff, which I'm into. If you don't know what Bioshock is, Google it. Um, but, um, I mean, I'm. It looks super interesting, and it's like this Loch Ness, Loch, this Loch Ness monster-looking thing, and falls in like this girl falls in love with it. But the kicker is like she's mute. Too. Like, so not only is it like a Romeo and Juliet or like a Loch Ness monster situation, she's mute. So this is like bonkers, but I guess it's been in Guillermo del Toro's head for a long time, which that's pretty cool. And to get like, to do these like things that you have in your brain for the longest time and then to like get recognized, like to that scale of like getting an Oscar he's like yeah this was like it was a weird idea back then and I finally got to like make it a reality and people fucking loved it like that's so cool as a, a creative person to have that happen like okay this guy this guy's not that hard I don't think oh no um oh yeah getting hurt by confetti yeah. Um, speaking of King Knight, who I just beat, uh, if you if you care, well, I do. There's uh, that's the newest. They're gonna come out with the King Knight uh, DLC for this. And Shovel Knight has been so good. If you bought it like when it first came out for like 15 bucks or whatever it was, maybe it was 30. I think it was 15. All the DLC since then has been free. And a lot of video games have DLC now, and it's usually like the whole Star Wars EA fiasco where it was like, oh, cool, I get DLC. And uh, yeah, it's also um, $170 for the goddamn game. Like, what are you doing? I don't, I don't know. But video games are definitely different than what it, what they used to be. But that's why I'm still playing this stuff like I don't play all these first person shooters like whatever I'm not good at them so I don't play them like if I'm playing a video game it's to like enjoy myself and just to like whatever jump on platforms or like just explore a world I'm not trying to like beat some 12 year old in Arkansas playing who like can only play for a couple hours after he finishes his homework like I'm not into that I'd rather just like turn on a game and play for like half hour or an hour and get my fix and then call it a day. And that's what I've been missing in my life. 
Um, what should I? I wonder if I should just play one. How long has it been? Yeah. Well, that's okay. I'm just gonna end this here. I don't even know what I. I. I don't. I don't know what I talked about. Kobe. Oh, I talked about Kobe and Will Smith. So that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh. But yeah, I'm. Again, I'm scared shitless to go to this stand-up class again. I have a new, like a new segment of bits I'm trying again. Um, I'm like, I'm gonna read like some, I'm gonna read The War of Art probably before I go in there just to like pump myself up <laughs> or just like listen to past podcasts. Uh, just cause like if I go in there thinking like, well, I don't know. I, I need to be like walking in there on cloud nueve. I need to be there on like cloud freaking nine. Like, oh yeah, I can't wait to tell it. Like I have, I have this to tell you. I want to tell you about it. Like, give, give me the microphone. Okay, I'll go up there. Hi. Like I, I have to be stoked to do it. So, um, that, yeah, it's still going on again, March 31st at like 7.30 or something. I don't know if I mentioned in the last one. I probably did. But March 31st at 7.30 is when like the, sh the show for the stand-up thing is. Um, and like, yeah, just let me know if you want to go and see me kill it. I was going to say bomb, but kill it up there. <laughs> Yikes. It'll be good. Like, I think... There's so much wrestling that goes on in my head. And again, it's like doing stuff. Like I'm taking it seriously. But I also like... It's taking comedy seriously. Which... Is there a book called that? Does, is someone's... There has to be a book. Like if you go to barnesandnoble.com or whatever. And like... Taking comedy seriously. That's gotta be a book somewhere. And if it's not... It's mine. Okay? I'll take it. Uh, but it's so, it's a back and forth. Cause it's like, I'm here to be funny and tell jokes and like stuff will happen during the week or I'll, I'll think of something and like, Oh, I got to put that in and like, okay. Um, yeah, that wasn't that funny or it was like funny situation, but I can't like reenact or tell the story in the right way to make that situation as funny as it was in the time that it happened and that's where I that's where it gets lost it gets like lost in translation I know that's a book or a movie Either one. Um, but uh, yeah it'll be good it'll be a good time and uh, that's that's all I'm trying to do man I just want to I just want to give people a good time because that's why you go to comedy things to have a good time that's all I want because I'm not I'll probably not do this for the rest of my life and uh, uh, let me get let me try something real quick. Um, yeah that's all oh this guy's stoked to see me whoa you have two music sheets take 500 gold for each this is gonna sound weird on the podcast because you can't see it but I like the, how they animated the suppose. Having my music piped into shopping centers, I suppose it does pay the bills. Now that I have this music sheet, I can perform it for you anytime. Just ask. Um, and, uh, but yeah, all I want it to be is a good time. And so, um, if you, if you could, um, if you could just let, if if you could just let me know if you want to go, um, or if you're interested or anything, if you have tips on being funny, <laughs> I'm constantly like, what is funny? There's always a moment during my week now that I'm like, is this funny? Am I funny? Why is this funny? And why is it funny? I'm watching stand-up shows and not laughing. I'm just watching. It's the weirdest thing. But I don't want it to happen for too much longer. Oi. But 
with that on that note i'm gonna uh sign off and i'll leave you with this guy so uh the Troupel king um and i'll put the music in the podcast but the visual will have it um anyways uh again thanks for listening hope you have a good week um again i don't even know what i just talked about but i'll go back and like listen to it i don't i don't know (laughs) anyways uh yeah Yeah! <laughs>